Hey everyone and happy Tuesday! That's right, it's my favorite day of the week and it's your girl hashtag JLone in the building. So happy to come to you this week. Um, I have a great topic and I really think it would be very helpful in helping you navigate when you do apply for a mortgage, whether it's with me or with someone else, how to best prepare yourself. And the clients and family members that I've been able to help over the years through their journey when they're thinking about it, giving them this information helped their process um, just be so smooth if you are aware of what you're going to face and what all is needed. I always get the, I don't understand why you need this or um, this is stupid, why would they ask for this? And it's because we're lending a ton of money and so there's guidelines that we follow in order to make sure that you do qualify for the loan, not only under um, traditional guidelines, but sometimes your lender uh, may have their own guidelines, but it all starts with what I call a perfect application. If I have a perfect application with all information, it helps me to help you go through this process very smoothly. And so I wanted to talk about how do you create that perfect loan application so that we have all the information we need to see if you qualify for a loan, if we can get you pre-approved and on your way to home ownership or refinancing, things of that, because guidelines have changed since I got in the business in 2006 and anybody who maybe hasn't uh, purchased since then and comes into the market today, they would be shocked at the difference of what we have to go through today just to get you in a home loan. It's not an easy process. But I will say it doesn't have to be stressful if you prepare yourself, right? You don't start working out and you immediately go run three miles, right? But if you prepare yourself for that moment and build up to it, when it comes time for you to run three miles, you're in great shape and ready to do so. The same thing with your mortgage app and your um, uh, getting you pre-approved. So I just wanna talk about creating um, a perfect loan application and it probably would have taken me uh, 10 boards to create the perfect app but I try to do it in a way that um, would help you with the basics and then we would work together on the rest okay so the first thing is when you fill out your application you want to make sure that you fill it out completely okay um, a two-year work history with start and end dates if applicable. So if you've switched jobs and have six jobs in the past two years, don't just put the one you're on now. We need every job, every start, every end date, and we need you to explain all job gaps that are 30 days or more because some programs will not like if you have a 30-day job gap. Some programs, if you've had a six month uh, job gap, will want you to be on your current job six months. So if you give us false information on the application and we pre-approve you and you go through, then what happens later is once we get your verifications of employment back and the dates don't match, it could cause you not to qualify or we'll have to change your loan program and that doesn't do anything but cause disappointment and unneeded stress uh, on yourself and on us as well, okay? Now, you wanna explain all changes of the way you are paid. This really matters. And I say that to say sometimes you've been on your job for 15 years and you've been doing great and now you got this new position and that new position now isn't just salary, it's salary plus bonuses and commissions and overtime. Well, it's very important for us to know, well, when did that start? Um, when did this payroll st uh, start and is any of it guaranteed? Because a lot of the times you think, well, I'm making more money than I did last year. But guess what? If now you're receiving bonus overtime commissions, we can't use that if you haven't been receiving it for two years and now we can only use your base salary. So if your base salary went down in this change, guess what? We need to know that. So explaining that in the beginning will help us to guide you the best way, okay? Now, fill in whether you pay rent or not. I know this may seem silly, but there's a thing called, um, great, my, my mind is leaving, but uh, payment shock. 
And if you are not paying rent and now you're going to get a mortgage in which you're paying $5,000 or $3,000, you're talking about payment shock. And when we run it through automated underwriting, it will notate if there's payment shock. And if there is payment shock, there's guidelines that go with the payment shock. So we always wanna make sure that we have that information. And that doesn't necessarily say you're gonna get declined if you don't pay rent. It's just, we gotta make sure, because sometimes you just sold your house and now you're living with your parents for free for three months just to get yourself ready for your new purchase. Sometimes there's reasoning behind it. It's just very good if we know that information up front, okay? Now, I need you to make note, even if it's paid off, do you have any ownership in any other home or land? Now, if your name is on title, we need to know because when we run all of the systems that we run, it's going to show that you have ownership. So if your grandmother left you some land or she put your name on her house in case you know something happens to her, you have ownership in that property. And there's things that we must get to make sure that you're not obligated on taxes, mortgage payments, things of that sort. So if you don't tell us and then the underwriter gets it and runs all her background checks, I'm telling you, if you hide it, we're going to find it. And she does her background checks and this comes up. Now I come back to you. And if by chance, you have to pay tax and all that stuff and we didn't know up front because you were like, well, it doesn't have a mortgage that could cause you not to qualify. And again, that causes pain, stress and frustration um, that is unnecessary. Now we do need a two year living history to pull credit. Um, so sometimes if you don't uh, put it in, it'll stop me from doing it. So if you are uh, living with your mom now and you just got out of college, make sure you put both addresses or however many addresses is so it makes a two year history, okay? Now fill out your assets completely of where your down payment and your closing costs will come from. This is super important. I, in the past week, have received bank statements with negative income in it, uh, $5 in it, and it leaves me just sitting there wondering, well, what is going on? Where is the money going to come from? So if a parent or someone's going to gift you the money, or maybe you were just planning the down payment assistance was to cover any, everything because that's what you believed, I need to know where your expectations of where money is. And I also tell you to be very careful with what you send in. Um, just think about it. Would you lend someone $300,000 if you showed um, that their, uh, their bank account was in a negative? I mean, would you lend money? So be careful with what you send in because I do look at it and I sit here and I say, what were they thinking? Um, because you don't want an underwriter to see that you don't know how to manage the debt you have now that doesn't include a large mortgage. So don't send us that stuff. I'd rather you just not send it to me and give me an idea of where it's going to come from and we'll work around that. Okay. Um, letters of explanations are super beneficial when it comes to bankruptcy, foreclosure, short sale, low scores late payments and collections, job gaps, job history, large deposits. Again, if you send in bank uh, statements and there's tons of large deposits that don't come from payroll, we need to know where this came from. So we're gonna ask you for a letter of explanation. We're gonna ask you for proof of where it came from. You need to be prepared to provide that information. And mattress money isn't, <sighs> you get it. All right, you get it. Now, um, provide complete documents to include but not limited to. Two years W-2, most recent for all jobs you have worked on in the past two years, okay? This is key. Don't just send me one, send me all, okay? Because I match it with your tax returns. And if your W-2 income does not match your tax return W-2 total, I'm going to come back to come back to you and tell you you're missing some, okay? Two years tax returns. Although some programs don't require them, I request them because sometimes borrowers hide that they have a side job and their side job shows a loss. Well, if I don't see the loss up front and I turn in your documents to the underwriter and now you have a $40,000 loss that she has to count against your income and you don't qualify, you know who the borrower's mad at? they're bad at me okay so i just tell you to please make sure 
that you are very upfront with your loan officer so that we know how to help you best, okay? One month pay stubs, most recent, okay? Your driver's license cannot be expired or expiring during your transaction. Two months complete bank statements, even if the page is left blank at the end. If it says page one of four, we need all four, okay? I write this in every email and you'd be surprised that in every time I get bank statements, they don't send the last page and they state, well, there's nothing on it. Well, we still need it anyway, okay? Now, uh, bankruptcy documents, divorce decrees, and this is bankruptcies within the last 10 years because we wouldn't see it otherwise, okay? Divorce decrees, any divorces in the past seven years, if that's one or six, we need all divorce decrees, all pages. Child support agreements and proof of receipt. Again, sometimes you weren't married, so we need the child support um, agreement and we need to show that you're receiving that because sometimes you have the child support agreement, but the parent don't pay. So we need to have proof of that. So again, just know, I want you to overthink your application. Overthink, how can I give them the best story of my life? Whether good, bad, ugly, indifferent, if you're honest with your loan officer, it's our job to look at all these pieces and try to make the prettiest puzzle out of it all to see if we can present that to the underwriter for her to see if she agrees with how pretty we've painted that picture. But if I'm missing the puzzle pieces because you didn't provide them, then it's hard for me to present my case in order to get you approved. So I know it's a long video, but I know that this is a very, very helpful video. And so what I need you to do for me is if it helped you, if you felt like this was like great information, please like it, comment, but most importantly, share it, okay? Whether they use me or not, of course, I want you to call me. This is what I do. My business is 100% referred. Um, so if you don't refer me the business, I have to go find it, right? So of course, I want you to refer the business to me. But if I'm not your girl, this video is still helpful for someone. So just forward it, um, share it to someone so that it'll help their journey in home ownership or getting a home loan a little bit easier when they understand all the reasons why and what we need um, to help them if we have everything up front, okay? So it's your girl, hashtag JLoan. I'm signing off as always. I want you to be safe. I want you to stay blessed. And I uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Until next Tuesday, talk to you soon. Bye.